Okay, welcome back, everybody. I hope you've had a nice little rest since that 50k super high run on the table, and we are straight back into action here in this 100k super high roller, the biggest buying event at our Polypoca Millions Barcelona Festival. Right. I mean, Bryn would be suspicious if if Steve Adai was to see bet on this board, right? It's the kind of board that should hit Bryn. Yeah, um, especially with the stack size. Um, Steven's not going to have Steve Adair's not going to have a, a, a large amount of bet folds, but he will be balanced enough that he will have some bet folds, which allows him to bet this flop. And as you can see, Bryn's just snap folded bottom here, <laughs> yeah. though, so he's <laughs> thinking exactly what you're thinking. That's why Bryn's a boss. Bryn with ace nine on the button, ready standing. Well, oh, Timothy Adams with king ten of clubs in the small short to play this one. Yeah, you won't be folding here. It's just a question of, um, with ICM considerations, he might just go all in here. Um, the problem is, Bryn actually, they're close in chips. So he has elected just to peel, which I think is a smarter option. You also allow Leon sometimes to come in from the big blind with King 5 off, but uh, he's went for the fold there, Leon. He's looking pretty gangster today, Leon. Like, he, he the hat on, the King's Casino hat, the shades. It's pretty intimidating. Yeah, even, uh, wow, what a flop this is for Aldo. Ace nine gives top Bryn can he top two pair? Ace Timothy. of clubs for Bryn as well. Timothy with the flush draw. Eh? Yep. Very valid point there. Bryn does have the backdoor club draw. Fortunately uh, for Timothy at this point, it's ace high and not nine high with flush draw, because Timothy might like to put in some more aggressive action. Whereas on this this board, he might, um, he's much more likely just to check call. Right, it makes no sense to him have really any value hands so with the check raise. Oh, he could certainly have sixes, um, and he could have like. Ace nine and ace six, but that's just not a lot of combinations compared to. He's gonna have a lot more one pair hands like ace x and nine x, and some like king highs and stuff that want to continue as well. So he's not gonna have a lot of hands that want to check raise for value. So he can't have that many bluffs. Obviously, you want to remain balanced against these tough opponents, and obviously with king high, you know, you are just dominating lower flush draws and stuff just now anyway. So you don't need to raise them off. And bingo. <laughs> <laughs> well, a huge car there. We see Timothy does improve to the flush, but Bryn, not out of it yet, top two, and now the nut flush draw himself. Yeah, I mean, it's a really interesting card actually as well. Um, All right, is it a card Timothy should be bluffing at fair frequency here with the lead? Um, not really, I think, because it's not, when he check calls flop, he's not gonna have a super high amount of car, uh, hands that wanna bluff. I mean, he could possibly have like, King Jack with the King of Clubs or something that's going to float to a small flop bet, but overall his range is going to want to do a lot of checking. So in order, like if he has Ace Ten of Diamonds here, he doesn't want to put any chips in. So he's going to check that hand. So you want to check your strong hands in order to protect your Ace Ten of Diamonds, so you can't just get bluffed off every hand. Makes a lot of sense. But Bryn, with a hand as strong as his, obviously a clear bet here. I think also by that logic, it would indicate that we're going to want to just, that Timothy's going to want to just call turn as well. Right, and that, that's obviously a, another good reason for Bryn to be betting here, because it's not a hand he'd ever want to have to bet fold the turn, but if he's not going to get check raised, basically for any hand. Yeah, I mean, I think realistically, it's um, really tough to build a, a check raise bluff range here. So as a result, you have to you have to check call like with a, a very high frequency. And cool, he does. So 570 in the pot, heading the, to the river. See what the, the river is. Wow! Oh my God! <laughs> this is like this is like the scene around us. <laughs> oh, no, that's this is. I mean, poor Timothy. So Bryn improves to full house. I wonder what Bryn does here. If he just he might just like I mean this is this is a card that's uh, it's going to favour Timothy slightly more because Bryn's not going to be betting. He's like middle pairs so often as as Timothy can have like 10 9 and stuff like that that's going to continue in the turn so it's a slightly better card for Tim's range um, which would mean when Bryn does bet he's going to elect to use a large sizing because his value hands are now go up as he doesn't want to bet a lot of his weak value hands anymore he doesn't want to bet ace 8 anymore you know right Very interesting to see how big a sizing he goes for he may just put it in I wouldn't be surprised he has 1.1 1 .1 million He bets 420,000. 
And Timothy's going to be all in here, I'd imagine, unless there's some kind of ICM considerations. Uh, maybe just call. He does yeah. just call, losing the absolute minimum with that hand. It's a very good just call. I mean, I think, I think the hand is probably, without ICM considerations, <laughs> strong enough to check raise all in. However, there is that consideration that it is going to be so tough for him to find bluffs. <laughs> yeah, it's still that quite early. I'm not sure how many <laughs> entries we are currently at in this. Of course, registration still going on for about another hour. So, I mean, it's time for you to get in for out of this. Wetting your, wetting your appetite watching these guys play it out. Like, the king flush just <laughs> check calling. And yeah, I would have had to <laughs> <You know. laughs> I was like, oh, I'd probably have just folded the reverence, <laughs> Timothy, you know? Yeah, I'd have a big <laughs> <laughs> Icky spot, is it not? Yeah. Um, I think this is a good candidate to use the three wet fold. Um, I think you're almost close enough. Wow, <laughs> you're almost close enough that you could actually just shove. Um, but I think using it as three bet folds probably a better option. Um, Timothy, uh, Timothy Adams has three bet, but it's Steve O'Dwyer in the small blind. Um, he has about 37 big blinds. An ace queen. As a spot, given what you're saying, you know Timothy has to have a three bet fold range here. That this is. Kind of just a hand he has to get in. I think so, yeah. This is a spot where you're just... It's not a high EV spot. You're not loving it. But you're probably going to have to go with it. And he does. And so... Oh! Oh, wow. <laughs> now this is like do? James Bond, isn't it? Um, I think this is the exact same thing I just said about Steve O'Dwyer. It's... Uh, not a super high EV spot, but you have to go with it again. I think it's bottom of both ranges. They're both sitting there not loving it, but uh, I think they both have to go. Oh, he's gonna f is he going to fold? It wow. looks like it. He I'm pretty, does. Su pretty surprised at that, to be honest. I think that's a, a Jack's plus ace king spot where you just have to get all those hands in. Well, saying that, I mean, Makita's a much better poker player than I am. Uh, <laughs> Got a little bit unlucky at the final, but you know, pretty lucky overall. So it was a uh, it was fun, fun sweat, fun, fun tournament to play in. Yeah, well, there was 183 entries in that 100k tournament. I mean, it's pretty absurd. So it was oh, just, it was just cashing is a great result in, in it when you when you're stepping up the level to something like that. Yeah, I mean, when you get, I mean, it was my at the time it was my biggest cash, no, second biggest cash, but it was like eighth place, second biggest cash. It's like when you've won some stuff, so like you know, it tells yeah. you how big. Like five million dollars to first. I don't know if I'd still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, this hand looks like Steve O'Dwyer has opened it under the gun. Corey Ademar's defending from the cup with the 6-7 suit. But Leon has peeled from the big and has flopped top pair. And decision on Steve. Bit of a weird one. Obviously, he knows uh, Leon's going to peel fairly wide from the big blind. But Corey yeah. calling from the cutoff on sub-40 big blinds. Maybe deciding that he's not going to get too many bets through on a king nine board. I think this peel might be. Um, I think this peel Corey might be making slight, slightly wider than normal, just because um, he knows it's probably going to go three way. Because Leon won't fold many hands in the big mind, nor should he get in the, pr the prices guy. Sure. And he's electing to start bluffing here with backdoor flush draw and some some dubious black backdoor straight draws. But uh, I I like it. Um, I think Steve O'Dwyer's checking range with uh, three-way with Leon, who's going to play fairly aggressively, um, is going to be weaker than right than normal. So. Yeah, he would he would see that he's getting action from the big blind more often. It's an interesting turn here. Yeah. He's picked up a lot of equity, but Leon's not. He's quite sticky, so it, it might be a spot where you might just want to take your equity rather than put more money in. But it is the nut like one of the nut cards to barrel for you. But the problem is, I don't think Leon's going to fold a nine to a barrel. Right. So he, might fold a, he might fold a four, but I mean, he might not fold a four as well. As we know, he's not going to fold a king. He's certainly not going to fold a king. Well, Corey has elected to fire bullet number two at this pot. I mean, John Noel's capable of buffing. I don't know if you've ever played with John Noel. <laughs> well, that was the thing. He's an absolute boss, yeah. Well. See, he's just put him in. This is, like, this is what I'm talking about. You're just absolutely breathless, and you're going to get blown off your equity. But it's like, but it's like the normal line here with the king would be to call and then check call river. But this is a spot where you just you're going to fold off 20% equity. 
Yeah. So and it's a spot where he might not even fold a nine, you know. So yeah. as, as an exploit, you might just want to check back there. Decision on him with what, 23 big blinds. I guess it's only one option, right? Yeah, I would imagine he's going to rifle in. I don't think he's going to have too many three bet folds here. Although some people do construct a three bet fold range with this stack, so maybe Corey is one of them. And it looks like he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So far, I've got everything wrong. <laughs> Corey yeah, does. I mean, I would have expected a shop here, but maybe he is. He's constructing a range like that. Um, it's tough to fight. Like you, you, you generally have to use like quite. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer pocket jacks in the big blind. And he's just got to piece this together. I mean, is it a situation where maybe if he hasn't played with Corey loads, I'm sure he has, but let's say for argument he hasn't, he knows Corey's a really good player. Does he just ought to assume that because Corey's three bet small, he does have a three bet forward range, or is it? Yeah, I mean, when you're playing with someone who you know is like a really good regular, um, it's like top regular, that is, you would assume that. They just have a great hand, yep. and you can make some really absurd folds to them. Well, Curry Altamir is not one of those guys. Steve does move all in, and Curry Altamir does make the call. Half is stacked back, worried to lose this pot. And an 8 7 4 flop. No help to O'Dwyer. Runners or a jack. 10 ton for, uh, for the sweat. <laughs> well, it's a king turn. It is paint. It's always the paint sweat, though. Yeah, yeah. Paint, paint sweat's good. He'll look to see another paint card on the river. And this is a jack. And it isn't. It's a four. Corey will double up. If they start doing it, I'm like, oh, I guess that's the good thing yeah, to do. Now. That must be the right thing. Honestly, I'm just like, I remember playing with uh, Sam Greenwood in Nottingham. And the blinds were uh, 25-50k. He opens the first three hands at 250k. And I, I was just like, is this a thing now? Because like, he'll know more about this than oh, I will. Right, like, so this is what we're doing now, is it? And I was about, I'm like, all right, I'm going to gonna start doing this. You know what I mean? Like, and then... Uh, a hand Larry goes, oh, the points are 50k. I thought it was 100. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I told him, I was like, I was like another orbit away from starting 5x. <laughs> okay. I thought that was what, thought that was what we're meant to be doing. Now. <laughs> well, here's a bit of action. Leon raising under the gun, king five suited, and Bryn, just the aces this time. Yep, Leon's getting a uh, little bit frisky with old king five suited. Don't get me wrong, we all love a bit of king five suited, <laughs> but maybe under the gun at this table might want to give it a miss. Bryn will three bet. Leon now playing well over 50 big blinds deep. So obviously, if he's a bit, you know, if he's shallow, Bryn might elect to trap with this hand, right? But there's plenty of hands he calls a three bet with and he's raised under the gun. Yeah, I mean, Bryn's also sized down here a bit. It's like an exploit, and you can see, like, right, Leon, so Leon in folded, mate. But, yeah. but maybe, you know, Leon may not pick up on those, but the other top pros at the table would maybe look at this raise sizing and think, oh, hang on, Bryn's probably got a really good hand here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right now, yeah, for sure. Like, I think this is a, an exploit sizing. Well, he did three bet and a 10 9 4 2 diamond board. Perhaps not the best flop in the world for black aces against an undergun raise and call. You can see, of course, Leon has nothing. I was just saying, like, I know Leon's flopped absolutely nothing, but it's just like. Just not sure he's not going to do something here. <laughs> <laughs> he does like to put the pressure on, and it's like this is a kind of you know dangerous-looking flop. Even though he has flopped, just I mean his cards might as well be blank. It's <laughs> one thing I will say. Because he's tempted. Uh, that's what that's what I like about how he plays. He's so tempted just to go for it here. Yeah, I might put myself in the uh, in the bin here by saying it, but I've noticed with Leon that he does put a lot of pressure on people. But it tends to be if he's he's sort of like a front runner. He likes to do it if he's if he's taking the lead in a hand. He's, he, that's when he likes to put the pressure in. He doesn't usually do it when he's being reactive at some stage, but you're right, does it like he wants to do something here? He's kind of the call out. I mean, he's, <laughs> he, he just, just hates business, the, isn't he? He's just, he's flopped the absolute nothing. He just hates to fold it. Like, <laughs> this is why, this is, this is a man who loves the game. Yeah. Certainly burning a time chip or two here. There we go, yeah, look. I'm loving this. He's going to get the bad news if he does something, but. You can tell, like, I mean, even though he doesn't play professional, he understands which boards are dangerous for the three bear and stuff. And this is why he's sitting in the tank. You know, it's not a hand you should be really in the situation with, but he certainly understands that this 10 9 4, right. you know, it's not, it's not an incredible flop for a lot of Bryn's three bearing range. And Leon 
<laughs> he just wants to take advantage of that. I've just, I've just had the thoughts he's having right now so many times <laughs> myself, so I can recognise it on his face. Well, another time chip for Ryan into the pot. I say, he does love fighting for pots. Don't do it, Leon. <laughs> we want to keep you around. He's got the aces, mate. Look at this. He's counting out as if he might jam. I mean, I wouldn't put it past him. Oh, yes. oh he does go it. alone. For it. Oh, Prince oh, snap calls. No. Oh, no. And Leon will see the bad. Oh. <laughs> I just, oh, you just know sometimes he's just going to go for it, you know. Oh. He was time chip. He was time time card chip committed. <laughs> he put half his time cards in. He's got to go for it. He's actually. You put can't put half your time charts in and then not do it, you know. <laughs> Shaking his head. Of course, he can still win. It's some miracle runner runner here. All right, guys, give us a sweat. Ah, oh, oh. come on, give us a little something. And that'll be the end of Leon. It is still re-entry time, though. It is still re-entry. Yep. Yeah, I'm Maybe. sure he'll be back in involved. Maybe that was playing on his mind. Uh, yeah, like one seven. Maybe he thought, you know, I can I give this a go. If it doesn't work, I'll just go flick another 100 grand at the problem. Yeah, you know, maybe he didn't like his table. He's just like, you know, <laughs> just go get a new table. Yeah, I don't blame him for not, like, for not liking that table. But it's always Leon. <laughs> you, can't, you cannot fault his heart. He like, If he thinks you're full of it, he, he his cards don't matter. He will go for it. Indicates he's a good player, so yeah, I think it's one of these. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure of his background. I did try to look into him the other day. Uh, I didn't find too much. If someone does know, then uh, let me know. You know, he has a. Oh uh, my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, well, look Timothy. at this, and it's good. It's a good. That's, this is why Bryn folded the Queen at clubs. Oh yeah, he know, no, it's gonna, he's gonna, we'd have flush, mate. Keith might check back here actually because he has the board crushed. Oh. Uh, Timothy flopping bottom two. Keith top set. But I mean, he sh I obviously should bet seeing the cards and stuff, but he has checked back, yeah. Nine of spades here. See, Brim would have had a, a gutter to go with it. Yeah. Try to tell me the river isn't the ten of diamonds, mate. <laughs> I just don't believe you. Well, Timothy surely to go broke in this hand. Yep. I mean, he just can't get away here. Question of how much to bet. So he has 14 seconds left to make a decision, or he'll burn one of those black time chips he has there next to his poker chips. And this is the case of your key. You're like, please bet, please bet, please bet. Yes, he's bet. Got him. It's bet pretty chunky as well. Leaving himself 285,000 behind. Keith will keep up the pretense and just call, or whether he'll just spring the trap now and hope. Because, you know, a lot of scare cards can turn like an 8 or a 10 or a club, you know. Yeah, there are a number of action killers. He'll be hoping for a nice low card on the river. Timothy has a few cards that you can get away on. That, that is not that one, of them. one of them. Yeah, the last few Super High Rolls I've put with Timothy in as well, he has just been like probably the, one of the most unlucky players I've ever seen. So he's just. Out of everyone in Rosbadov, just in ridiculous spots every time, just things like this. When he does shove, is called, shows his jack seven, and we'll get the bad news. He was drawing almost dead on the flop. And he will be the next player to part from our feature table in this 100k super high roller. Looks like we have an Isaac Haxton bust out here from one of the outer tables. Wow, it's not like Ike to be in for a few bullets in the high rollers. So, so I think it's fair play. I think if you're just that good, it's fair play to get needled on the stream. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you see Reina Kempe and Maria Ho there. Another one of poker's power, power couples. couples. Yeah. So, there you go. You stole, you stole the line phrase. from Love me. Love that phrase. I know Maria was obviously watching the stream the other day when Reina was it's on tough. our feature table. But you think this is, this is like going, shall I buy it again? <laughs> Look around the room. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's many lineups where I won't buy in again. Can you oh. need a lot of like intro. Oh, he's back in. There, there he is. There he is. Straight back in. Just, just found hundred k in his pocket. Yep. Just out the old, out the old satchel there. Just grab a quick hundred brick and then fire back in. And let me see which table he gets. Mm. Uh, I'll tell you it certainly won't be an easy one. Well, there's Patrick Antonius, Stefan Sontheimer, so Eric Seidel there. Goosey got the hood up today. Must be serious business time if the hood's up. Oh, is, that the, is that the sign? It's like, well, I mean, that's old school scarf, really, isn't it? Right. It does seem to 
It must be old school stuff. Uh, it looks like you just got a message from someone asking how you're going to be British Player of the Year when you keep claiming you're not British and that you're a Scot. Yeah. What's that about? Mr. Jesse Sylvia says, I'm going uh, to paraphrase. It says, how are you going to win British Player of the Year, you uh, questionable gent? Ain't you Scottish? Now, you know, for our American cousins, we do have to explain, you know, sometimes that there are countries that aren't America. Um. <laughs> well, something weird going on here. It's Isaac Hackson's joined this table. And then because of that, we've had a rebalance, and that means Patrick Antonis is joining our feature table. Ah, some kind of tag, tag out situation. I'm not quite sure how that happened there, why Haxon didn't come straight to the feature, but it means we get to look at... And, you know, sometimes you've got, like... Owen. Still got the old 250k score, mate. You know, I'm quite happy. I mean, 2k to just, you know, chill and have a beer and not have to play against the two, two of the best players in the world for... By at least double. Oh, wow. Previous years. It's pretty insane. So oh, yeah. I think we have an all-in a call here, and uh, Keith's going to be pretty unlucky to be dominated. But Well, Jack, 10-7. Certainly a chance. One diamond. And it is the eight. It is the eight. Who would ever doubt Ferraldo? I mean, when you've spent as many years studying on all-ins as I have, you know, <laughs> you get to be pretty accurate in the end. And another seven on the river is Steve O'Dwyer, who will leave. And that is how you lose 100,000 euros. Scarf coming off. Oh, no, just the microphone. Uh, always great, not just because obviously you're one of the, the funnest guys on tour, but obviously I know you, you, you're too modest to say it, but one of the top players in the world at the game of No Limit Hold'em, and it's it's always great to get insights from players such as yourself. Well, I think we've learned a, bit, a few valuable lessons about like when 10 line's going to be ace 10, and you know, other things of that nature, you know. Well, before you do that, Mikita's got a full house here with his pocket threes. Weird. I've done two streams on party, right? And there's always that flop that you may not read out on a party poker sponsored stream. <laughs> I've seen it so many times, like three times in two streams. Eight, eight something. Yep. I mean, come on, 100k two day event is just. Keith is a. Uh, I like to bet here. Uh, Makita's small blind range is going to be pair heavy and ace high heavy, so. It is a spot where if he's going to start betting King Jack, because obviously you have a block, you have blockers to the the suited broadways that Mikita would fold. So you are going to have to bet multiple streets with this hand if you're electing to see bet. Um, you can either take that strategy or you can just check back also. So it'll be interesting to see if Keith does follow up here. He's a bet once. Mikita checking over the four turn to him. Who's going to complain though anyway? Them listening to anyone who's the problem with this hand choice is like, especially it's even to triple, is obviously Mikita. Yeah, Mikita here has threes, but like, generally speaking, Mikita's like strongest hands are going to be like pocket tens. Probably he might flat jacks also, so the jack might not be a bad blocker. But um, basically, your king jack is blocking like ace jack and stuff that will fold by the river, and you're not blocking like nines and tens that are going to be strongest call downs. Right. Um, so a hand like nine ten suited, like if you have nine ten of hearts, would be a good hand to triple off on like a blank run out. Um, whereas king jack's going to be like not, like you're going to have blockers to hands that you want to fold and right. not block the hands that are going to call you down. But it'll be interesting to see if he bluffs this over here because Mikita has a lot of ace highs um, with this line, so. Of course, we can see when he when he has got pairs, though, this will be probably the worst river for him to see. Yes. And, and the fact that Mikita does have a lot of ace highs high means that he will be less inclined to defend these pocket pairs. Yep. And of course, he'll just have so many ace x he can just call. This just shows Keith exactly where he is in this hand. He's, he's recognising that the King High can't really take the showdown and is turning it into a bluff on this river, trying to make Mikita fall exactly the kind of hand he has. Given the... Uh, He's been quite aggressive so far. He has. Well, Makita, figure this one out. Scarf Keith's against si non-scarf. Yeah, Keith's, Keith's sizing on the flop is like, it's small enough to indicate that he wants to bet his ace highs for like pseudo value protection. So if he has like an ace king, he can get called by ace jack and stuff like that. And also it stops like Nikita's queen jack suited to having a free card. Right. So Keith can have ace highs after his flop sizing. The problem for Makita is Makita also has a decent amount of ace highs. So he might end up folding, which is what he does here. Because he knows his range is protected. With all, He's not going to fold any ace highs on the flop. And he will have higher pairs. So generally speaking, threes is going to be roughly around about the bottom of his range almost. Um, 
so you can just fold that spot and know that your range is protected from yeah. the other hand. Well, it looks like we have a three-way all in here. See Christoph Vogelsang, Dominic Nietzsche seem to be all in with the worst of it. And a double knockout. In fact, it is Dominic and Christoph who will leave. 100k down the drain. Wow. You see the other table, Sontheimer, Haxton, Matthias, Seidel. <laughs> Makita, assuming has raised it up from under the gun. Patrick seems to defend from the small blind and a queen six deuce flop. They've both seen a deuce turn. Vikita firing a second barrel on this board. Antonio so doesn't like he's ready to give up just yet. Well, Patrick decides to give up his pair of eights. 40 seconds now to act. 45 45. That's what I said earlier. Yeah, I don't know why. He stood up, so it looks like maybe he has busted a from this tournament. Well, oh, looks like Vogelsang has bust again. See him tapping the table and getting up. And sure enough, there. Quick 200,000 euros spent in the last half an hour. And see how these guys decide to navigate their way through the field. And like you say, Marcel, there's always a, a learning curve watching. Oh yeah, poker is keep changing and they have to come up with new developments and uh, some make you change your game because if you don't change your game, then you're standing on the side. Walk. You cannot wait for the best hands. You have to maneuver. He's uh, quite a character. And now uh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, okay. yeah. It oh. helps when the door card yeah, is a seven. Good luck, guys. Well. Thanks. all then out instantly at our feature table. Obviously a man who's had unbelievable success over the last few years in these super high buy-in events. Here with the infamous Fader Hulse, well, you really are all the rage online. Uh, obviously you were short and you had to make your move. Yeah, nothing, nothing I can do. The hand plays itself, so. Yeah, one or two hands, and then there you go. We lost holes, but hottest player in 2016, hottest player in 2017. What are your big plans for 2018? Uh, just relax. Barcelona has really nice weather, mm -hmm. good beach, so. Wow, I'm, I'm actually impressed. This is like the first player I've spoken to that said they're actually going to go out and enjoy it, because everyone actually, else I'll is. Actually, I'll fly back tomorrow, but uh, there's right. nice be uh, weather. <laughs> 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 okay, lovely. Well, thanks so much. I'm sure we'll see sure. you again, Fader. Thank you. Back to you guys. It's always the idea. Poker player has fun. Okay, and I'm out. I go to the beach. I get some sun. I enjoy. And I'll then they it. say, what time the tournament Easy. starts Easy. tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, that's what we've had. They always seem to be getting on Once top of them. others, aren't they? Eventually. Yep. And look at this. Timothy Adams raising it up. Ace King of Clubs to 90,000. Jason Kuhn on the button with pocket jacks. Uh, big blind is at this stage 40,000. So Adams opening off 40 bigs. Kuhn, you expect looking to three bed and get this in. And he does make the three bet 220,000 to play. Wow, look at this, Marcel. Jake with nines behind. This could be good for uh, Jax. What will he do from the small blind? Very suspicious of Jason's button three bet. Maywell flat. Maywell look to four bet. Well, he does four bet. He basically has to four bet fold. Yeah, I, I don't like the flat there because you're out of position. 
too many. He may just let it go. You know, yes. he's got four and a half million, yes. and that's where he yes. does. Yes. Pretty horrible spot from the small blind. No, I like that. And Seth Davis with another real hand. Queen Jack suited in the big blind, but he again in a similar situation can't really play. And so it is back to Adams, who well, will surely be four betting Ace King suited. I'm not sure if he's going to four bet. Well, we'll see. Jason has his hijack versus button. So Jason would have three bet with a lot of hands here. Question of whether Timothy wants to slow play that ace king. You can play conservative. Certainly as well with a hand like ace king suited as opposed to ace king offsuit. He can flat. But he doesn't play conservative. Play. <laughs> he moves all in. Jason will double check and he has jacks sorry. and makes the call. And these two off to the races. It is Timothy at risk with ace king of clubs. Jason covers with, well, a good five million behind. So if he were to win, we'd be a big chip leader here at our feature table. It is the classic coin flip. Flop, deuce, deuce, ten. No good for Timothy. He does, of course, have backdoor clubs, though. And a ten on the turn. He will need just an ace or a king on the river to survive. Or else it will be over for him, and it is. That is the end of the Super High Roller Series here in Barcelona for Timothy Adams. Yeah, it's a typical clash, isn't it? Still, of course, though, Marcel has the 10,000 euro main event and a 10,000 mini high roller to come at the end of the series. Just a, li just a little tiddler. <laughs> just a couple of 10Ks to play. I like these runs now. <laughs> yeah, another player who's spent 200,000 euros today. And doesn't look too worried about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the most amazing thing, isn't it? Making it four times the blind. 160,000 a play. Bring the pressure back on Jason. He will call. I'm not sure yet. So these two heads up to the flop, 360,000 in the middle, and we see a seven in the window, but then a queen and a ten rolling out afterwards. Jason won't like that too much. And he's deciding how best to proceed on this flop with his bottom player. I don't like being I don't like being away from home for a long time, so I don't mind sketch. I say it now, but well, Jake has made a continuation bet of 130,000. Jason check calls that bet. It's too dangerous now to uh, to bet there for Jake. Right, a lot of the cards Jason would have called with on the flop are going to call this turn card, right? Yeah. Maybe improve the two pair or a hand like he does a pair in a straight draw. Probably fun in the summer. I mean, coming here to Barcelona. This is like dead devil, putting pressure to steal the pot away. Or a great ace. That's most of the time your first intuition. So he's definitely going to call this. And he does indeed call. 475,000 was the bet. 1.6 million in the pot going to this river. And well, an ace on the river. The worst card Jason could probably see. <laughs> but it feels like he leads it in to bluff him on the end. And that's what he's doing. 1.2. And he is firing bullet number three at this pot. And Jason this in is, a very... This is very difficult to call for Jason. In a very tough spot here. I mean, it's... Oh, Jason reaching for chips. This would be quite a remarkable call here, yeah, Marcel. It would, it would be an amazing call. Remember, he didn't follow this action. Jason limped in from the small. Jake made it four times the blind from the big and has gone bet, bet, bet over three streets. Jason with just a pair of sevens and a busted straight draw. And he does give it up. It's, it's, it's too hard to... I mean, he must really have a, a read on him there to just call with the bottom pair. And with this development. 
Well, actually, quickly before I do reveal that, looks like a little action on the outer table. And looks like Sam Greenwood is leaving us. Maybe that's all she wrote for the Canadian. And I'm not sure who got him there. But like an like ace five against eight, it looked like to me. Eight nine, I think, yeah. Oh, eight nine was it? I there think he go. made two pair of Eric Shadell. Well, it looks like Daniel's all in here. Can't quite make out his hand, but it looks like he's against the kings of Stevie Chidwick. And, oh, it was king six. So he kept, oh, that's what we couldn't see. He kept one of his cards hidden as the board ran out. <laughs> yeah, but it seemed like it was a desperation uh, yeah. play with these last big blinds or something like this. That's kind of Asash. fun. Obviously, in a tournament, players put the cards in the back. These guys just having a bit of fun there. He's like, I'm not going to show you one of the cards till the end. Yeah. Most of the time, you get 30%. That's what makes this game so much fun. Mateus now raising up in the hijack, ace queen. Oh, this is going to be an all in in the call here, probably. Yeah. I think Zach's move is here to go all in. Maybe he might call to get uh, some players behind in. Uh, I think in the big band is John Noel, and uh, I, I'm sure he tries to get uh, him t uh, to play hands with him. He wants to play hands with him, but I think it's not too much. It's, it's just one million here. I think he's just going to go for it. He's counting down his chips. Mateus calculating what's going on. And you're right, he does move all in. Yeah. John Noel folds from the button. Jason Kuhn and Jake Schindler fold blinds. And of course, Mateus does make the call with Ace Queen, so they are off to the races. Mateus covers his opponent, but only just. So this is pretty much all in for both players. And Zach Clark will need his nines to hold up. And so far, so good. King, deuce, three. Mateus with six outs. He keeps his, Zach keeps his poker face even when he's all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> Look at his poker face. For both of them. <laughs> you think they're playing at a big pot, wouldn't you? Oh, oh, and there's a queen. Oh, and even after yeah. he loses, he keeps the poker face. Yeah, and as we say, Marcel, just a tap of the table. Yeah, tap Good luck. Table, off you say, go. Good I want to see someone throw a chair. Come on. Hmm? Is it too much to ask to see someone throw a chair or a chip or get angry? I've they have things. to go to America, like uh, <laughs> the Bellagio room, some of these players, uh, Mike Matisov. Uh, you know, they keep complaining to players how bad they play, which is very rude. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, 16 no. remaining. Average stack is 3 million chips, which equates to 60 big blinds. And the guy bets it out. He bets it. So I think, and I call. I think it's good call. Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's a 9, and there's a rainbow. <laughs> so you check. I bet. He raised. I call. I don't want to go over the top because if he raised, he yeah. have maybe he have two outs or one out. I don't see. I, I don't know what end. Yeah, the river is a ten, and he goes all in. I call, and he shows me queen eight. Oh, <laughs> the back door. It was the only hand I played, and I was out. I looked so stupid that tournament. Well, meanwhile, look at this little bit of action we have here. Jason Kuhn raising up the button. And I see Dennis Blyden asking, is Alex Foxen still in? Well, looks to me like he's still in. He has flopped aces up with a 2.3 million stack. But he could be out if the queen comes. <laughs> <laughs> he could be out. He's not won the hand just yet. But this looks like it will be King action. comes. He's he loses well. King, yeah, but uh, he's only going to uh, he's going to survive if the king comes probably and gets to get away somehow. Well, eight to twenty-five in the pot. Both players will feel very comfortable about their hands. Alex checks it again over to Jason. Yeah, and uh, probably Jason is going to get for go for a bet here and on the river probably too. If there's a clean river, blank river coming up, then it's going to get very expensive for Jason Cool. But he has a big stack, huh? Yeah, he can afford to lose a spot, but like you say, he's not, it's not dead yet. He still has a 14% chance of making the best hand by the river. Jason Kuhn, the survivor. And he does bet 6.15 on this turn card. Foxen with a pretty clear check call, right? 
Yeah, if he ha if he if they have if if you have oh, if uh, he's ace king, you're, you're if the done. if he has ace you're king, done you're anyway. Done. So let him pay to improve. If he doesn't have ace king, no, if he doesn't have ace king, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if he has nothing, then you want to keep him in. He must have something. Must well, I like it. Alex doing the old bluff use of the time chip there, sliding that one in, <laughs> making out he has a tough decision. <laughs> it's important to balance your time chip. You might be thinking about going all in, but uh, yeah, he, he does go he all does in. Go all yeah. in. And Jason will, of course, call and receive the bad news that Foxen has outflopped him. Otherwise, the American will double up. And the four on the river 1 .5. does improve Jason. The ace is up. I don't know. Jason calls here pretty quickly. And he has the queen of clubs, which is the card that he really wants to have Alexander yeah. to have. Like, what I does he think the other guy has? The like 10 jack, queen jack are uh, the main bluffing hands. Yeah. He cannot have a bluffing hand here to go for clubs, can he? Not so exactly that. so he must give him another hand. Yeah. 1.75 million is but what still they're playing the, for. The winner of the main event is going to walk away with more money. Yep, they won't be too far away from this. And we see Jake opening up. This stack size is a little bit wrong, guys. Sorry, it does occasionally happen. There's about 4 million missing from that stack size. He has raised it up here with ace, seven of diamonds. Alex. Interesting, just flooding from the small blind with Ace King. Oh, yeah. oh Lickin, wow! What do you think of that, guys? Obviously, uh, the, st the stack sizes are far more even than it would appear. Jake has about four and a half million, so obviously they're pretty deep. Oh wow! Well, you get himself in oh. some trouble here. You have to think. Jake flopping aces up. He just called against uh, Jake. Yeah. You see there, Jake does actually have well, best part of five million behind actually. So Jake yeah, does cover so the, the, the display is wrong here. They got five million, <laughs> so it's a little bit deeper. I don't know. It's really surprising, like it's yeah, it's uh, Americans love Barcelona. Everybody loves Barcelona. It's true. And he and will bet really this river. People are. Uh, I think people are really mm. big in Barcelona. But. The size is very important to prepare the later streets and to set up your strategy. Yeah. Whoa. Wow! Oh. What about, uh, Improves to a full house now, Jake. And Alex, of course, won't expect Jake to ever have raised and see better board yeah, three over the seven in his hand, right? But, so that that'll Paradise be the one of the safest cards on deck yeah, for his mind. There'll be two of us. Everybody said was the greatest. Yeah, Ace King and, uh, is in trouble here. Yeah. I put Again, all guys, ignore that graphic. Jake has a lot more than 455 back here. In fact, covers Alex. <laughs> Which, that'll be fixed as soon fun. as possible. Yeah. I mistakes do occasionally uh, happen. My, my taxes as an extension, just in case uh, <laughs> you get clean. Yeah. Oh, he traps him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might, find, might, find, might end up finding a couple uh, losses hanging around later on. <laughs> I did mine on time and overpaid. That's the move. Now man. it gets interesting. Yeah, he sets the it. trap here with the full house. Not so unreasonable. You know, you got to check some they strong hands like against good players year, sometimes because they could like bluff here yeah, with yeah, an over bet as well, you know. Like, not, let's say now Alexander has like 10 jack or some king queen or yeah, float. He space to hang himself. Yeah. Little did he know that he had a better king. Yeah, when you were processed your return for 2015. Cool. Yeah, he's gonna make a big bet. <laughs> Got to check like a couple weeks. He's ago. gonna bet pot here probably. Oh, that's gonna get expensive. More than pot. He's, probably all right he's gone big, 1.2 million. <laughs> Jake cannot believe his luck. Uh, but yeah, I have to say this was such a crazy spot to bluff. Uh, I mean. And he does move all in. Well, I see the reaction from Fox in there. Yeah, that's horrible news here. If you bet a pot size bet, two million pot, and you get jammed all in here, and suddenly you're going from, I have the nuts, please call me. I was noticing not the nuts, but you feel like that. Effectively, yeah. you're like, please call me to, oh my god, I have a, maybe a bluff catcher here. <laughs> maybe I can, you know. Could be losing. So what, hands like I mean, it's quite a lot of combinations. Seven nine raising nine nine seven nine. Next time, uh, 
Okay, oh. what, are we betting on how many timings <laughs> <laughs> are going to go? Uh, he's going to use one more and then, then he marked the hand. I think he's going to forward. It's just... Really yeah. Wow, Could go through all the time bank cards here. Put to the test in this 100,000 euro event. This is one of the longest tanks we've seen so far this week. Burning a lot of time chips. He does make the call oh, and wow. he will get the bad news. Yeah, wow. Jake had the full house wow. and Alex is out of this tournament. You can see visibly shaken here. And Foxen will depart. Always a horrible feeling, isn't it, guys? Calling off on the river when you've got the worst oh, yeah. hand. You <laughs> yeah. get it in free flop. You I didn't expect him to call. I didn't expect him to call because it, his feel was not okay, you understand? And sometimes you have to go by your guts. Instinctively, I think he knew he was beat there. Or he's walked off with the mic, so he has to come back to the table. Yeah, this, this is bad. This is bad if you have to do an interview when you just made. Yeah, the loser's interview, I've, I've hated him. Um, very good position to win the whole tournament, which in a main event is uh, a little bit different. Well, wow, look at this, Dominic. I finally get involved in the action. Oh, Dominic Nietzsche, he's a uh, he's low stack. He's limped under the gun plus one. Oh, interesting, guys. So we have good players limping also. Please don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> Nick raises it from the small blind, making it a 250 to go. Seth with ace jack and the big blind, also with a bit of a decision here. I can't remember. You had something reasonable, but he bluffed my face off. Yeah. Seth could well be in trouble himself here, right? Only a million chips. Yeah. Tough to get away from this one, but the under the gun. Limp could be also a trap. It's just because it's Well, he does move all in, though. He goes for it. And what, what does Dominic do now? <laughs> He's going to back. <laughs> he's so he's happy. About he's so happy now that he limped, you know, <laughs> after this action. Limp under the gun, so that must be something. To Even worse shape for. So he will be the next man out of this high roller. And there he goes. No. All friends here. <coughs> Seth. Oh. The next to leave. So there are two bust outs and a couple of hands here at our feature table. Uh, what's his name? At the hub. Uh, oh, uh, 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 Hem. John Hesp. Jesp. John Hesp. Yeah, John Noel definitely will be raising up from a lot of places you're not supposed to. But look at this Nick with Ace King raises the button. Jake defends with Queen 8 and Ace 8 6 the flop. Jake looking to do a few chips in this pot, you'd think. 125. He's going to check or bet it. Even. He bets, but Jake is not going to give up. He's going to see a turn card. Jake also good stare down here, stares him down, and he's going to call. And then on the turn, it's going to be interesting. Nick is obviously going to bear a bet again. He's going to hit the queen first. Okay. <laughs> You're back again. Are we having a are we having a redraw for no, tomorrow? No, no, we keep the same place. Same same position. Same from position the for tomorrow. Okay. And after we draw at nine. Okay. Takes his so yeah, time. We're gonna, we're gonna continue. Same, and he does eventually make the call. Cool. Two hundred forty thousand was the bet. Ow! Uh, <laughs> Ow! Hello. What a turn for Jake. Hello. Magic gate. And again, he's just going to check and let Nick hang himself here most of the time, right, guys? Yeah, well, I don't know if you're supposed to bet out here sometimes, maybe. How do you, how much uh, behind three million? I yeah. think you alarm people when you bet out, or you just put a stop bet so you encourage them to race you with an ace. <laughs> yeah, but he's going like, to like let's see what I he guess. does. No, he's going to make a proper yeah. bet here. He's going to encourage him. 
575 the bet. This is going to get nicely for Rivershov. This is going to get really interesting because I can see if Nick is going to uh, call here on the river. It's going to go it's going to get expensive here. I think it's probably going to go all in because yeah. 1.9 now in the middle yeah. and 2.4 behind. There's one move for Mr. Jake Schindler. Wow. Oh, oh, definitely. That is cutting. Wow. Sure. <laughs> Jake looking like Jake Schindler, runner, runner quads. He's Nick, gonna of shop course, it now. full house now. You think he's gonna, gonna get him to make an instant call here? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Check is quite risky. There's two hands he can lose from, quads or full Crushing? house aces. Other than that, he's mm -hmm. like crushing, probably. Yeah, it's I mean, if he shoves here, what's? I mean, is is checking better? If you, I mean, if you check here, you get 7, 9, yeah, and a 9, 10 really float, maybe to bluff. Yeah. But you lose out on getting called by... Uh, right, he does move all in. You miss out on getting called by the flush and uh, the ace. And if you check, the ace <laughs> might check behind. Look, he cannot go nowhere with this stack. is too small oh now no. for the pot. He think he's trying to force him out. He's... <laughs> Most times well, he does make the call. Yeah, of course. Quads it's are usually good in the game of Texas Hold'em. In this situation, no different. GG and AKP. Yeah, good luck, boys. Jake takes that another ace king. And well, look at that. Quad eights. Jake Schindler taking a huge lead in this super high roller. He'll make himself a tough man to beat. Later on, brother. <laughs> he keeps putting in those chips. Will he put the other ones in, though? The snake is thinking, <laughs> what is going on? These young kids, what are they doing? Corey what and Stefan watching the football on their phone. What will the snake do? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, he doesn't look comfortable to call. And he will give this one up. Keith Tilson taking down that pot. You got five more hands, he said. Uh, I think that was for the one of the other tables. Uh, one of the other tournaments going on, maybe the two and a half K. Certainly not this one. They're playing at this level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's different than the World Series. You come in and there's two on the tables there. And <laughs> you see tiny little people on one side and the other side. <laughs> it's like so big. Yeah. And right on the beach here as well. Always nice going when you've got the 15-minute breaks, pop outside, get a bit of sun. It's been a long winter. <laughs> Look at this, a mini three bet. This is going to be fun. One time I he three bet. Mini. Small, small three bet, open, under the gun, small three bet on the button. And, and he gets there the again. <laughs> Not the magic. flop. Makita was looking to see Queen seven five. He checks it on was over to John. John Ray was on the final table no already more. in the last. Uh, <laughs> Correct. Yeah, he came uh, fifth in the fifty k this morning. He's making a move. Good Lucky man. guy. Good <laughs> yeah, he's an interesting guy. He has kind of a charity organization that helps other charity organizations. Yeah, it's good for the game. <laughs> yeah, like kind of like. A well, King Jack six here. Dominic does flop bottom pair. Jason second pair, and Eric top pair. Something for everyone here. Tom does cool. Jason, a bit of a weird spot now, right? A lead out and a call in front of him. Bet. Uh, hold on, I gotta get the action correct. Who bet? Eric bet. Out. Eric's led from the big blind over Dominic's limp. He's called bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw. Jason with middle pair does decide just to give it up. Almost got away with it, huh? Almost got away with it. There's no posting on Oh, yeah, yeah. You almost Could snuck get it up interesting. Yeah. Was a good try, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> six on the turn. Oh, Carnage. six. And how can Eric ever think Dominic's limp with a six? 
Ja. <sighs> Eric now betting 360,000. Dom with the old check back. Have I really got that lucky? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. Like, uh, pretending he has a flash. Like this, he should only flat call. Oh. Know, to get the value, but he mo might be moving all in. Well, it looks like Patrick's all in here. Against with Aces. Ace, something against Aces and an Ace on the board, so it'd be tough to win that pot. Tomorrow it's going to go pretty quick to the final table. Well, look at that board. Ace, seven, do seven. Yeah, top house against top pair. Eric makes the call and receives the bad news. Dominic with three of a kind. Eric will need a king on this river. Otherwise, Dominic will finally double up and be back in this tournament. And the river. Seven of diamonds. Not a king, so Dominic suddenly will be, as I say, in this game tomorrow. Serve 920, that's the total bet. Pretty with a comfortable stack there. Yeah, yeah, nice. Wanted to get your thoughts, Jason, overall on the play here at the featured table. I know you shared a couple of moments with Seidel there. Oh yeah, he's my boy. I have <laughs> so much love for him. Um, he's become a good friend of mine, which is almost surreal. You know, in the beginning of my poker career, I just wanted mm -hmm. to emulate him and ended up being this down to earth great guy that I've learned so much about, uh, like I, I give him credit for anything culture I know about, music, food, uh, theater, it's it's all him. He like took this redneck from West Virginia and showed me a couple <laughs> Broadway shows and some good food, and great music, and uh, yeah, it's, awesome. it, yeah, it's nice to get to play with him. I really admire him. And you had such a great day today. Um, you know, um, I think it partly has to do with the fact that your girlfriend is the goat. I mean, yeah. not only did she bring you a salad, she brought you an organic spirulina salad. Yeah, and then uh, like eight hours later brought me another meal. <laughs> I'm feeling great. I could like uh, go another eight to ten hours here. It's, uh, it's definitely no secret to my success. We got we got together a little over three years ago, and if you look at my results in the last three years, it's wow. like it's like actually exactly on par with when we got together, and uh, so much credit to her for that. She's legit the goat. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, Jason. Coverage will resume tomorrow at 12 o'clock. We're going to swap some featured table. We'll have your friend, uh, Stefan Zonheimer, over here. The goose. The He's goose. loose. The goose is going to be loose. Manana, 12 o'clock. Thank you, Jason. Uh, yep. Thank you guys for watching.